Hey everybody, welcome back, it's Business, and uh, covering the Battlefield 5 open beta, and some of my thoughts, and a lot of footage, fun clips, some bad clips, and <laughs> as expected, but uh, I think I left most of those out, but because uh, some of them were really bad, but yeah, I just wanted to uh, give some thoughts on this, and um, just my impression, my um, what my opinion is on a lot of the things that are going on with this game because I think it's actually getting a bad rap. Uh, there's a lot of good with this game, but at the same time, you know, there are things that are poorly done and other things that are great in idea but very bad in execution and, uh, you know, other things that I just downright hate. So we'll try to cover all the bases and do so rather quickly. Um, I want you to be able to enjoy some of these clips as well, of course. Um, first things first, the various classes um, have assault, of course. Uh, support, you have Medic and Recon. Um, the balance here feels very, I don't want to say heavily skewed towards Assault, but you know, weapon balance is going to be all over the place, I think, um, especially given the nature of what we're dealing with here, because most likely we're not dealing with a, a like the latest build of the game. This is a, a newer build, sure, but not the the one that's, oh yeah, we're eight weeks away from the release of the game type of build. At least it sure as hell didn't feel like that to me. Uh, felt like there was a lot of work that needed to be done in regards to that balance, but um, who knows? I guess we'll only be able to see when the game is actually released. Uh, in that regard, I do think that the Assault class is going to be... There's going to be a lot of people playing that because, holy shit, the Assault Rifles are going to be really powerful and there's a bit of a perception difference here between when you're shooting at somebody and when they're shooting at you. Uh, when you're shooting at them it doesn't feel like they they die quickly enough but then when you get shot and you're at full health you die to what seems like one hit and there's a weird disconnect there um, more so with this game than any of the other battlefields that I've played and it can be really hard. It's it's actually more like Battlefront in that regard uh, because I always had that problem with Battlefront where I'm hitting some guy six, seven times and then he turns around and it feels like I just get hit once and I'm dead and that that sucks. It's a, it's a It doesn't feel good to you know, play something like that but the Assault class is just really strong. Um, you know, really flexible, but the main thing that's limiting them, of course, is the ammo, which I'll get to later. Um, it's just a weird setup with the ammo in this game, uh, as it currently is, but it does make sense, and again, we'll get to that. Uh, Medic felt uh, really strong, super easy to stack up a massive score with Medic, because you're just reviving everybody left and right, and everybody can revive everybody else. The difference with the Medic, though, is that they're a shitload faster, so you're going to be a lot less exposed. That's a, that's a pretty crucial aspect in this game, where... Jeez, man, you engage one person in front of you, there's another guy on your right, you're just always, always flanked or shot in the back. I can't even begin to tell you how, how often that crap was happening to me, but um, the SMGs, again, I, I think they're going to be really overtuned, um, just way too strong, but uh, I mean, that's how it was in Battlefield 1, and I think that's how it's going to be in this, but um, the recon class felt all right. Uh, for the most part, I tried using the spotting scope from time to time. It just didn't really feel like it was doing anything. And I I feel like if you're part of a squad, an organized squad, using the spotting scope makes a lot more sense. But if you're just playing on your own and just with randoms, I don't really see the purpose of using the spotting scope because you're not calling out specific targets to other people in your squad. Um, unless they're right next to you paying attention to the same thing. Uh, the assault, or I'm sorry, support class felt uh, good all around. I just, I always felt like I was a, like a, a step below the assault class in terms of the weapon out or the damage output. Um, yeah, and that, and I'm just running around throwing ammo bags at everybody. But uh, you're seeing Business Six's business turn down service here, and uh, this is the Fortnite inspired aspect of the game because there is a bo uh, Battle Royale mode in the game. It's a separate mode, of course, but um, they have applied this fortification building to other, well, I, as far as I'm aware, every aspect of the game. And I gotta tell you, in Conquest, this is fucking awesome. This is a great addition. I know a lot of people are gonna say it's gimmicky. I love it. And it, it changes how a a cap is defended and, um, like, how you can protect yourself because 
you put those sandbags up and then go on the other side and throw down the barbed wire, they can't jump over the sandbags. You know, it's it's just cool little things like that, and I think it's actually a really good touch. But um, I like it, and you can even dig foxholes and build uh, AA mounts, um, like on uh, silos on Narvik, and uh, there's some really cool stuff. But uh, in regards to some of the stuff that I really dislike, you're looking at it right here. So, <clears throat> the UI... It feels more like it should be on... I feel like this would be better if I were using my phone or my tablet. It sure as hell feels like it's out of place. And this this is one of the most convoluted, uh, minimalist designs I've ever seen. So you have two things at the main menu. Uh, you have your armory and, uh, what is it, my company. And you, I'll show you that in a moment. But um, in here... In the armory, you can go ahead and like change the skins, which they all look pretty lame to me. Uh, certainly nothing as good as the ones in Battlefield 1, which I, that's a weird step back. But um, you can select all those and everything, but you can't just double click them. You have to select and then select equip, which just seems like a weird oversight to me. You know, one of those quality of life things, which I'll talk about a lot. And then you go to your armory here where you can upgrade your weapons and i didn't find out about this for way too long so you have these credits that are up in the top right there you get those from completing assignments and you know challenges or whatever the hell and in here you're able to like just really make a, a stock weapon a shit ton better and i kind of feel like some of this stuff is just a bit too powerful um you know maybe they should scale back the you know whatever the multiplier is or you know the um whatever is going on here like just tone it down a little bit more because it feels like it's just too much of a, a gap between somebody who clearly has one of these and clearly doesn't and this is something also that will prevent people from playing things like aircraft especially aircraft because if you're going up against somebody who's got a full tree of this and this type of stuff is available for vehicles as well you are in a huge huge hole compared to that person and that's to me that's a pretty harsh thing to deal with um, another problem with this is that i have now completed an stg uh upgrade path right i can't change this i have to buy another stg through uh, the I think this or the actually I think it's the um, the armory uh, you're able to quote unquote buy another one and then equip that differently none of that shit makes any sense that is so unnecessary and it's it's detrimental to being able to uh, adapt and stuff you shouldn't have to buy an extra tank an extra aircraft just to you know play it differently to be like, oh shit, okay, this isn't going to work, I need to change uh, this for being able to be sniping on the move or something. It's just, none of this makes sense. And again, it's it's a minimalist approach, but it's so convoluted in terms of how many layers there are that it's just, it's a giant pain in the ass. And the UI is a huge, huge failing in this game. And I cannot believe that this is supposedly a AAA title that this type of design and battlefield one's design wasn't good it was it was pretty shit and this just takes it way further back and there's no information which again that's one of those things that clearly that will be addressed in the full release but you, i don't have a good feeling about the ui as it is it's too late for them to change it frankly and that really sucks because yeah like i said it just, it feels like it holds the game back in terms of making it uh, more user-friendly. So, uh, what you're seeing here is one of the bigger problems as well that a lot of people have, is that uh, you gotta resupply all the goddamn time. Everything. Your tank? Cool. You are up at, uh, say, that sea cap up there. You run out of ammo, you gotta go all the way back to get some of that uh, sweet, sweet ammo and heal up. And it, it just, it takes you away from... Uh, being able to engage the enemy and all that, which is exactly the point. So, vehicles in Battlefield have been so excessively dominant that once they move to a certain point, the enemy team will likely never be able to get past that point. And that really sucks. Everybody's been on the receiving end of it, and it fucking sucks to play against a team that you can't defeat because their armor is 
is too strong and too far forward and you just can't do anything about it. So what this does is it guarantees that uh, people are going to have to either throw their tank away by just charging in and getting themselves killed or they're going to have to retreat. And it's one or the other because at some point you're going to run out of ammo or you're going to run out of health. There's, that's it. And there is a repair tool available for, I think it's the support class. Um, you just have to upgrade the that class. You have to get enough experience with the, that class to be able to unlock that upgrade. Yeah, but um, I did have a guy helping me out with that, and it, it made a huge difference, but you still run out of ammo. And I do think that's a good thing, um, limiting the ammo, but it, it's a it's a double-edged sword. Um, it does take away as much as it, as it provides, and I, I know what they're doing with it. I just think that it should be a bit faster. And also that those supply points, you can literally look at the the red barrel there with the pistol, shoot it once, and it'll blow up the supply crate or the supply station, and that shit's gone. I I think you might be able to repair that, but I, I really I didn't really try that. <laughs> it seems like you should be able to, but they they either need to make them more resilient or they need to make them repairable because not losing one of those points means you have to go all the way back to your spawn point to be able to resupply it and that is insanely stupid it's that is such a slap in the face to the player for you know doing what they should be doing or could be doing, you know? but um, the same thing kind of applies to the infantry because you start off with say here i'm using the sten uh, for the medic class, I have 32 rounds in my magazine that I already have in there, and then I have one 32 round magazine as a backup, and that's it. I have to go to a supply crate, which is just to my left here at D, and uh, resupply and get one additional magazine, or I have to have somebody who's a support class use uh, or like throw me an ammo pack, and that way I can get that additional. That, that third, or I'm sorry, well, I guess that second backup uh, magazine. That's it. That's all you get. Uh, to me, that's that's where you should start. <laughs> because for some reason, you're able to carry three Panzerfaust, which I'd, I'd much rather see that uh, like you're limited to one Panzerfaust, and if you go to a resupply crate, you can carry two. Uh, because, I, holy shit, guys. You have no idea how vulnerable tanks are. Uh, oh my god. I have never ever felt more vulnerable in a battlefield game using a tank than I have with this and it's just it's unlike anything and you get surrounded you're done you're just you're dead so one thing that uh, I really like is something you'll be hearing here in just a second coming up and you get uh, there's there's no behemoths but there are reinforcements that you can call and we'll get to that here just a second it's coming up there it is that is the v1 and i love this effect nice so this is running on medium so it's not as beautiful as it could be but um yeah i when i was streaming i had to run on medium i could run on ultra when i wasn't streaming but whatever so you hold b and you get three options um if you have enough squad score, as you see down in the bottom left, I have plenty. Um, so the big one is, of course, the V1, and that'll cost you 41,500. You can get a Sturm Tiger if you are German for about half that, and for about a third of that, you can get a really basically useless supply drop. Um, I really don't like using the supply drop, but I thought it sucked. But when you call this thing in, damn, it it's nice. It comes from basically where your spawn point is, and... Uh, you just look through the binoculars and call it right in, and it makes this hilarious farting sound throughout the <laughs> throughout the sky. But check this out: dueling V ones. <laughs> that was awesome. So this is one of my favorite things in the game, and um, if you are close enough to a friendly one it'll knock you on your ass. And I'm actually, you may want to turn the volume down a little bit. This is going to be the raw sound here in game. So I'll just leave this as this. Yeah, that stuff made me jump more than once. 
it just wow it knocks you on your ass and you actually have to get back up it's so cool so um that's really one of my favorite things especially later in the match when everybody starts launching their v1s that it just gets crazy so um yeah that's a that's a fun addition i'm sure it'll get tiring pretty quickly but you have your chance to get the hell out of there you know but uh, anyways as far as uh, some of the other stuff i don't like uh visually holy shit this is the hardest game i've ever been i've ever played to try to discern an enemy from the background and i think it's because of a lack of spot shadows as far as uh, shadows beneath uh, a player they don't stand out enough from their surroundings to my eyes and this is a problem that really only started to show up for me in battlefield 3 and then it was okay for um you know it's, it was about the same battlefield 1 i felt like it got a bit worse and then battlefield 5 here is probably the worst i've ever seen it and um, it doesn't help that the dark areas are also insanely dark like when you're just in shadows there on rotterdam you can't see a fucking thing and if I if I'm aiming down the sights at somebody, oh my god, it's it's just rough. And I'm not sure if you saw that uh, beautiful little effect there when you hit an enemy tank with a round. There's a, a glowing ring from where the shell impacted. Very cool. But anyways, uh, tanks feel pretty good. Um, like I said, they're very vulnerable. But uh, there's again a nice tactile feel with uh, hitting enemies with the, the tanks, especially other vehicles. Um, you can get a little gutsy and move in, but chances are you're probably going to get TNT to shit, and uh, that's one of the biggest fears of uh, going up against somebody here and charging uh, this enemy Valentine, for instance, in uh, my Panzer IV, which I wasn't able to upgrade as much as I wanted to, unfortunately, throughout the open beta, but um, yeah, it's pretty cool, man. <laughs> Check this out. <laughs> like a battlefield. So weird. But uh, yeah, there's there's some pretty fun stuff here. Um, I think some stuff that is pretty solid. I I played this a lot more than I thought I would, and I don't think it's quite ready for release. And apparently neither does Dice because they delayed it um, until mid-November or something like that. And I can't imagine how difficult that must have been for Dice to try to convince EA that they needed to do that. But, um, because, you know, shareholders. But in regard to that, I can respect their decision to to be like, okay, we need to put a hold on this for a little bit longer, try to iron things out a little bit more. And hopefully that's exactly what happens. But I, what I think this game is going to need immediately is the community test environment, because that benefited Battlefield 4 drastically, and we really are going to need it for this game. Uh, Battlefield 1 did not benefit from what they learned in Battlefield 4 and the community test environment, which is why I had so many problems with it, that and the fucking rampant hackers. Um, I did run into some of this crap, of course, in the open beta. Uh, there was some obvious stuff, um, you know, just the random headshots from across the map and stuff from uh, an, an LMG that... There's just no way you would have been able to do that, especially with how quick and the, the rapid uh, succession of uh, headshots and stuff, and then other people getting the same crap against them. It's just, you know, it's going to happen, and I think it was just so prevalent in Battlefield 1 that uh, I gave up on it, which is why I stopped doing it. So to close out with the last clips here, I just wanted to say that there's plenty of potential here, much more than I may have initially thought. Um, I didn't get really a chance to play the planes, they felt like crap anyways though, but um, I, I just, the flying in this seems like a total afterthought, it's just in there to still make it feel battlefieldish, and I know a lot of people are going to complain about the uh, fact that female combatants are in the game. Um, basically. It was going to happen one way or another because of Battlefront and the fact that that game appealed to a shit ton of people and so why would they withhold that with Battlefield? Don't get me wrong, it's a bit weird having something like this happen against uh, an, a female Asian opponent. Like, eh, it is what it is, but I don't personally give a shit and it's, it's not like this game was something that was an immersive experience in regards to anything outside of the sound design. Um, you know, this isn't a game that the world you know, and if, if that's something you want to do, and if that is something that is an issue for you, well, that sucks, but you don't have to buy the game, and, you know, it, it is what it is, it, and it is what you make of it, 
you don't have to buy the game if you don't like what they're doing with it. That's that. Not the more, but uh, I'm sure there'll be some interesting stuff in the chat below. But uh, thank you for watching today, everybody. I hope you have a good one, and I'll see you next time. Take care, everybody.